Welcome to The Diplomats. This is Shakir Din Shahin. Today, we are going to talk about recent developments in the Middle East with Palestinian Ambassador, His Excellency, Mr. Nabul Maruf. Mr. Maruf, uh, what would you say about the recent developments in the Middle East, the rebellions in Middle Eastern countries, and how this have impact, would this have some impact on your country? First of all, uh, and this is what they say about it, the Arab Spring, which is take place in the Arab world. And uh, this is, in fact, reflects the previous situation in the Arab countries. We have a lack of democracy. We have lack of freedom, you see. So we do need to change these systems which have been controlling the area since the last 40 or 50 years. And we are going to change it, in, and the people, they are trying to change it in way or another by uh, revolutions, by demonstrations. Uh, sometimes uh, the people pay the price as what's happening in, uh, in Libya and in, in Yemen and, and, and Syria. And uh, some of it uh, pass uh, smoothly, as what happened in, a little bit in Syria, in Tunis and in Egypt. But I think uh, the future is for more democracy, more freedom. Mm -hmm. And the impact of this is going to be in favor of all the peoples of the region. It's going to be in favor more democracy, more freedom. It will be a plus uh, for the people because whenever you have this freedom, whenever you have this democracy, this is means there is an, uh, the door will be open for more democracy means you know, for changing the power in the country upon the votes, uh, the, 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 the people's uh, will. Mm -hmm. uh, and for instance, uh, in Egypt, President Mubarak stayed there about 30 to 30 years. In Yemen, the president is there since 32 years. In Libya, the president is there since 42 years. Mm -hmm. In Tunis, since 23 years, he stayed there. So I think these opportunities will help in uh, giving a chance for the people to change their leaders uh, depending on uh, democrat democracy in the in the country. Will the Arab Spring have some impact on your country, or what kind of impact are you expecting? You know, our the the issue, the the cause of Palestine. It is, in fact, it's not only a Palestinian issue. It is an Arab issue. It is a Muslim issue. And then the Palestinian issue becomes the main conflict in the world which affects the international peace. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we suffered in the last uh, 60 years here in, in, in the area. And this is, was also, and when, when we don't have that much of democracy, if we don't have that much of freedom, in the region. This is, was affecting negatively mm -hmm. the situation in Palestine. Now we hope that if the people uh, have the chance to control themselves, to, to, to have more democracy, to have more freedom, this is, will enhance in way or another the feeling and or uh, to, to, to settle the mm -hmm. uh, situation in Palestine by creating, inshallah, just peace for the Palestinians. Uh, this Arab Spring, if it is goes ahead and if it is succeeded in way or another, we are going to get benefit of uh, from this Arab Spring. I see. Um. You know, we have this. We had this Mavi Marmara incident, flotilla incident, and uh, the second flotilla. In the second flotilla, Mavi Marmara didn't take place. What would you? What would your comment be on this? 
And first of all, uh, Ave Marmara, the Turkish ship, didn't participate. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, depending on a decision which taking in consideration uh, the situation in, Tur in Turkey, the situation in the region, mm -hmm. uh, the relations uh, between Israel and Turkey. But the other ships, uh, they tried to move and to go to Gaza, but mm -hmm. in the end there was uh, an effort uh, made by the international community to block these uh, ships and they didn't allow them to go to Gaza. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is the, this has happened in Greece where the government there stopped these ships and they didn't allow them to go there. So, so now it's not only Avi Marmara is the, didn't go there, but in the end, the whole project of mm -hmm. sailing some ships going to Gaza have been failed because there is an, a, a decision from the European countries, let's say, or from the Americans or through the pressure from the Israelis or the Americans on the other. So on, on, they didn't allow these ships to go there. Um, what is on your agenda these days? You know, uh, Palestine here in Turkey, it's always uh, a priority for the Turkish leaders and the Turkish uh, policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are uh, well supported by the Turkish government and the Turkish uh, people. Uh, last month, uh, President Abbas was here in, uh, in an official visit where he met the president and the prime minister and minister of foreign affairs. And we discuss a lot of issues any bilateral and also the reconciliation between Fatah and Hamas and in fact the situation in Palestine. Nowadays, you know, we are uh, planning to go to September where we are going to launch a campaign in the United Nations to get the recognition of the Palestinian state on the borders of 67. Mm -hmm. This is, we are insisting in going there on uh, next September. Uh, next, uh, next week here, we are expecting all Palestinian ambassadors all over the world to come to Istanbul to uh, organize a conference in Istanbul mm -hmm. uh, where we would like to launch our campaign to the United Nations uh, from Turkey. So we are going to, all the ambassadors, they are going to, 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 to listen to the Prime Minister Erdogan, to President Abbas also is coming again, and also to the Minister Ahmed Dawudoglu. So this is an important uh, event which is going to take place, where this conference is going to be sponsored and, uh, by the Turkish government. And Meanwhile, while we are having this uh, conference, we are going, we organizing the fourth cultural week in Turkey, which is going to took place, to take place this time in Sultan Ahmed Square in Istanbul and at Taksim Square. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we are moving to Urfa. Why Urfa? Urfa, we choose Urfa because last month also, I think we, we signed the twinning agreement between Urfa mm -hmm. and uh, a city, Al Khalil city. Yeah. And you know, Urfa is the uh, city where Khalil al-Rahman born. Mm -hmm. And Al Khalil, city of Al Khalil in Palestine is the city of Khalil al-Rahman where he got buried there, you see. So we hold this twinning between both uh, municipalities and to enhance the relation between both people here and there we are bringing a folklore team and we are going to organize uh, cultural activities in Orfa for two days. What are your expectations from Turkey? Turkey is contributing, supporting your cause, but what 
other ways, alternative ways, can Turkish government and Turkish people may get involved in this process? And I think uh, Turkey is doing their best. Uh, first of all, I think they, they are committed to the Palestinian cause and they are helping. And uh, we never asked for anything from Turkish side and uh, they say no, no, we always they are supporting and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now they are uh, helping us uh, with, the, with all the countries all over the world trying to get uh, the recognition of the state of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Uh, we cannot claim anything, in fact, uh, from Turkey, uh, yes. because really Turkish government and Turkish people are always supporting uh, uh, Palestine uh, in the high level.